Hello. Welcome to Bookmark Chapter 20. How have we already done 20 chapters? I don't wild. Know. It's honestly wild. Um, but today we're going to be talking about the evolution of young adult books. So we're going to be going through kind of the history of young adult. It's going to be really fun. I'm excited. I'm a nerd. So I think it's a really fun episode to do. But first I wanted to, oh, actually let's introduce ourselves. I'm Haley. You're on my channel, Haley in Bookland. I'm Hannah. My channel is A Clockwork Reader. And I'm Zoe. My channel is Read by Zoe. So we have a few housekeeping items really quickly just before we get into things. So first of all, we have an Instagram page. So it's linked down below. We made one. It's really fun. We're having fun with it. Um, and we also have a Goodreads page because if you missed last week's chapter, we now have a book club as well. So for that book club, we are reading Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. So we are going to be, there it is. <laughs> So we're going to be talking about that on Goodreads and basically all of our social media and stuff. And we'll have a live show at the end of the month. But Goodreads is a good place to meet other people while you're reading it and kind of discuss it. So it's kind of fun. But yeah, that was everything I wanted to say about that. But currently, we are reading different books. I don't know why I said we. We don't do everything together. But <laughs> I'm <laughs> apparently. Um, but I'm currently reading A Curse So Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kimmermer, which I had a sticker that was covering the last er, so I said the name wrong in my vlog, but oh well. And then I'm also listening to the audiobook for Dear Evan Hansen by Val Emick. I am currently reading Daisy Jones and the Six. I started the audiobook last night on or yesterday on my way to her book signing um and my mom and I were listening to it in the car and it's phenomenal so far I'm almost done with it actually and um I'm also currently reading Fire by Kristen Cashore and I'm nearly done with this one as well and yeah I'm really loving everything I'm reading right now so it's been a great time Yay! Isn't that the one that people said you would like the least? Yeah no they said I would like this the most. Oh what was the one? Is that Bitter the next Blue. one? Bitter blue. Okay. I um, wish I read before this one. Oh, uh, okay, okay. I read this one last because I wanted to read the one that everyone said I would like the most last because I also thought I would like it the most. And so far, I do like it the most. So y'all you know right. yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I'm currently reading two books as well. I am reading Daisy Jones and the Six. I am about how many pages am I into it? Like a hundred pages into it. I started it and then I could not put it down. So I had to make myself stop because we have the entire month to read it. And I also started listening to the audiobook and because it's all told interview style audiobook, the way to go. Really yeah. enjoy it so far. Um, and I'm also reading Howl's Moving Castle by Diana Wynne-Jones. I love the Studio Ghibli film and I needed to read this because it's actually quite different from the film. It's so different. Yeah. It's like a completely though. different story. Yeah, there's like sisters and like all this other subplot. And I was very confused when I first started reading it. Interesting. Um, so since we're going to be talking about like history and stuff, I wanted to do a kind of brief timeline. So most of my information, I got it from different sources, also just stuff that I knew. So hopefully I'm right. But um, I do have the video that I used as my main source linked down below for you guys. So it's a video that Epic Reads did like four or five years ago or something like that. And it's just about the history of YA. So we're going to get into that. Um, so 1930s, Little Woman is kind of the first book that was directed toward a teen audience because one of the reasons why I love Alice in Wonderland is because it changed children's literature a lot. And this is kind of the YA version of that. So before Alice, most of the books that were for children were just moralizing things. So that's a big thing that Alice is making fun of, like with the whole Duchess character. I could go into this, but I won't. <laughs> I promise. I promise. Um, but it was all to teach you something. So it was the first book that was actually for the enjoyment of kids. And Little Women is kind of like that, but for young adults. So um, it became a thing where you could read for fun and it wasn't just to learn something. What a wild concept. Mm -hmm. um, and then Zoe actually read this book, but in 1942, one of the other first YA books is called The 17th Summer by Maureen Daly. 
So um, it's a teenager who wrote it, Wild. It's a coming of age story about a 17 year old who's about to go to college, first love, summer romance, and she does chores and stuff. Zoe hated it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So she's, it's in the 1940s. So she's very much like a 1940s, like going to be a housewife, basically. So she does a lot of gardening and she like makes dinner. And it's all about her like learning about life through this first romance. But she's so boring. She's just the blandest piece of toast imaginable. <laughs> but it is seen as one of the first like summary rom com books, which is a genre that I really like. But it has definitely evolved since the 1940s. I should hope so. <laughs> yeah. um, but then in the 1960s and 70s is when YA finally came to be. The 1970s is known as the first golden age of YA. So you have The Outsiders by S.E. Hinton, which is often credited as the first like modern YA book. Um, but the exact term was coined in the 1960s. So um, it starts dealing with topics that wouldn't necessarily always be catered to a young audience. It was the age range that they coined the term for was 12 to 18 years old. But um, they start dealing with topics that a lot a lot of times, especially in like the olden days and all that, you wouldn't talk about those things at all. Like, especially if you were talking about kids. Um, so then in the 1980s, it kind of switches from that more serious tone to fun, lighthearted titles and experimental styles. There is the first book that, the first teen book that hits the New York Times bestseller list, which was Sweet Valley High. And then in the 1990s, you see the rise of the horror genre. So goosebumps. Um, and then in the late 1990s, youth culture becomes a big thing. So it brings the genre back because in the 1980s, it kind of, or sorry, the late 1990s, it kind of started to lose popularity and all that. Yeah, sorry. I knew I said it wrong, but I didn't want to repeat myself again. Um, but then into the 2000s, they have specific YA awards that are established. So like the Prince Award is the one that I can think of right now. There's many others. Um, and then we have yeah, I think Newberry is more kids, no, but it's like nonetheless, yeah, it's in that weird. in that area. Um, so then we have in the 2000s the rise of the second golden age of YA, which has paranormal and dystopia and buzz titles. So like Twilight, The Hunger Games, all of those things brought YA to a new kind of renaissance. So that brings us to where we are now. I'm sorry that wasn't the briefest timeline. I just felt like we should have like an idea of where we've come from. Um, so now we have a variety of different genres. Like young adult is wild now compared to what it used to be. It's crazy. And I feel like we're almost in another golden age of young adult. The third golden age. Yes. The platinum age. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Is that all? Okay. <laughs> I wasn't that sure. That was everything. <laughs> I thought that you knew I was done. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I'm checking. Um, did you talk about the creation of New Adult? I did not. Okay. okay. So to that later. Oh, yeah. But so we talk about that. Talk about was how um nowadays the genre lines are so blurred. There were the um creation of more of like the middle grade and the new adult to really separate them. But think about like Harry Potter what is it? Some of the early books are children's books, and then it delves into young adult. There's also a lot of, like, um, Court of Thorns and Roses. It's technically new adult, but it's shelved mm -hmm. in the young adult area, and it's all very blurred, but new adult was actually only created in 2009. The term was coined by St. Martin's Press, which I thought that was so interesting that a publisher was just like, let's make a new age category. Did they know it would turn into erotica for younger people? I don't know. But here we are today. Um, so it's really catered towards people 18 to 30, the people who are just graduating from young adult. But because it's kind of been used for erotica or it's used more for sexual purposes, it's not really thought of as like as equivalent to young adult. There's not as many genres in the new adult age category. Well, because if you go to a bookstore, new adult is shelved as romance. There's no new adult yeah. section. It's, it's romance. In, or it's in young adult. Yeah, most of the romance. time though, it's in romance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's where I generally find it. Um, but 
it goes like either way. So something that I've noticed is that protagonists in young adult books are older and older. It's very rare that you see a person who is like, and 12 to 18, yeah, 12 to 18 is such a huge age difference. Like a 12 year old relating to something that an 18 year old can relate to, that doesn't make sense at all. Like that makes zero sense to me. So we have the issue of all of these protagonists being so much older. So it's aging up the genre. So you go from middle grade, which is like the nine to 12 area. And that is younger, right? Like, so nine to 12 is once again, a really big age range. So there almost needs to be something in between the middle grade and the young adult. And then something after that, that isn't just new adult, like new adult as I feel like the term like new adult that's not romance is what I'm trying to say Mm -hmm. that that's not the central focus it's just for like university students because there's nothing that's really like (laughs) that Mm -hmm. you just get into the romance so that's Mm why YA is really hard genre to pin down or not even genre but age category and it also evolves so quickly because it's very Mm trend-based which I think is fascinating Well, I think with young adult, a lot of kids like to read about people older than them. So that's why a lot of back in the day, mostly they were 15 or 16. And now they are definitely getting to be like 17, even like 19 and still considered to be young adult. But I know like when I was a kid, I thought it was so cool when I was reading a book about like a 14 year old and I was like a little 10 year old, like, yeah, that's right. I'm going to be so risky. Look at me. But definitely I feel like Unless it's a style of book like Percy Jackson where they age with each book, that's the only time you see a 14-year-old or a 13-year-old. Where are they at? I have no idea. Yeah. Hiding. They don't yeah. exist anymore. But even yeah. the books about college, like Radio Silence or Fangirl, they're definitely like considered to be young adult. In yeah. Sense. yeah. Well, also, also, all of the ones that are always about college and in that, like, new adult like border age do you know what I'm talking about like they're always freshmen in college so like they just finished high school or they're about to finish high school and go to college or something like that so it's like it's never there's never an entire like story that's just about someone who is already in college has already established that like adult life at least a little bit they're always just transitioning into it which makes sense because the entire kind of genre is about transition because Mm -hmm. your teenage years are about transition um but I agree I feel like there should I feel like we need a separate like new adult that is separate from romance new adult um that focuses on that transition because like I don't have a single book that I can relate to in terms of like transferring to a university and being 21 and figuring out everything that you need to figure out at that time in your life. So yeah, I feel like that's where we're kind of headed. At least that's what I've seen in terms of like the um, stories that are being told now and like the ages of the characters. So yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like, well, that's what New Adult was going to be when it first started and then I think it's because of Fifty Shades of Grey the popularity of that they're like oh like that has serious money but we can't market it to kids (laughs) so what are we gonna do market it to barely kids (laughs) or barely adults I'd switch that around I mean also what's associated with like the college age and everything like that it's that like yeah that's probably chastity all that absolutely that's what I was going for Uh but it's like that party like wild figure yourself out years so they're like obviously you want to read but romance I almost just said something really bad and graphic but I didn't I stopped myself so (laughs) small victories um but it's just it's such a weird age range especially because I'll have like when I was working on the floor at um, the bookstore, I would have a lot of parents come in and they're like asking about the content of books. And I totally understand that because you can't tell anymore. No, because you don't know like like, an age range on it. Some of them will have an age range, but honestly, I feel like all of them should. And there would be often times that I would see like a little 12 year old carrying Akotar and I'm like, no, don't do it. Like I've literally gone up to parents and I'm like, you shouldn't get that book. Like, just don't do it. 
just don't do it because obviously every kid is able to handle something different, mm -hmm. but I would hate for someone to, you know, like just be like, oh yeah, like this seems like a great book for me as I'm You're 12 like, years old learning about myself. <laughs> and then they're like, oh God, like this is so graphic. So I just feel like age ranges in books would be very helpful. Mm -hmm. I think it would be great. That's well, my opinion. Also, it. Yeah. Another problem that we've been facing and have, there's been a lot of discussion of it on Twitter is the fact that so many adults are reading young adult books books so they're really expecting to be catered to in a genre that's not for them but it's yeah. because new adult it's only romance centered and we want like new adult fantasy or something like that new adult like contemporary that's not specifically focused on romance and so oh goodness I I I understand why like I'm still reading young adult books because it's such a varied age range now. There's so many different types of books, so many different types of topics covered. I think it's one of the most diverse age ranges out there. There's so much experimentation and so much diversity that's been like, I think it's probably one of the most diverse age ranges nowadays because people are really I pushing so, yeah. for like, we need diverse books. Like, um, but so that's why we have stuck around. We're like freshly adults, but there's even older adults who haven't been able to find the same level of quality of books or the different. Hello, the it's me. The, the cops are here. <laughs> Pull me away. I'm reading under my age level. But that's something that I, I want to talk about a little bit, maybe in the comments if you have anything to talk about. But we can move on to other questions since we have a lot of questions from Instagram and Twitter, but yeah, we what do. do you think about that? Like, why do you still read young adult books? I think like, that um, a lot of it is that I grew up reading young adult books. I think I will mm -hmm. always love to read young adult books because it's what I grew up reading. Like I grew up reading Harry Potter. I'm always going to love Harry Potter. Um, and I think that since it wasn't as big as it is now or like for us growing up I think that's why a lot of people who are maybe a generation or two above us may not read as much young adult as like our generation and the few like surrounding us tend to because we all grew up with that versus other people who grew up reading more classic literature um so I think that's definitely one of it just it's it's what we're used to um but also again with like what you said Zoe I feel like it is the most diverse in terms of um, the topics that it covers. You know what I mean? Like you can find almost anything in YA, like, and you'll be able to relate to at least one aspect of it. And I think that's what's so appealing about the genre or the category, I guess. Um, and that's definitely one of the big reasons that I still read it all the time and why I think I'll always read it. Um, yeah, I don't know. There are probably yeah, other reasons too. <laughs> I feel like it has a little bit for everyone. Mm -hmm. And I feel like since I'm at that in-between age, I honestly think I can relate more to like a 17 or 18 year old than I can to like a 40 year old who's looking to like, you know, someone who's older and looking murder to get married. Husband. Like, <laughs> perfect. Yeah. <laughs> that I can't really relate to wanting to murder my husband because I don't have one. Obviously, oh, that's yet. the main issue there. <laughs> one day. <laughs> <laughs> one day. Then I'll be like, yes, I can relate. Finally, <laughs> some relatable content. I can finally <laughs> murder my future husband. <laughs> Amazing. Um, Zoe, you have a new book that arrived. Everyone is yelling at you about it. Because your dad put that it was UPS. Dad, Amazing. stop commenting. <laughs> I love it. No, I'm kidding. Oh, my God. Um, but I just feel like young adult is such an enjoyable genre to me. I have so much fun reading the books, and I don't feel like I'm being talked down to, which I think is a big problem I have with adult a lot of the time. Because they're trying to sound intelligent. They're trying to, like, literature. I just am like, please stop talking to me in such a condescending way convoluted no thank you I just want the story pretty language is fine but like I don't need to feel like I'm like having to hack through it with a chainsaw to actually get to the story and the characters mm -hmm. that's just I not we, oh sorry oh okay you can go ahead if you want to oh I'm just going to say that I think that the writing quality wise it's the same as adult at least for oh, the books yeah. I've read in adult it's the same quality wise it's just the fact that the protagonists and maybe the topics are a little bit aged up so 
yeah sorry what were you gonna say I was just gonna say I feel like there is a lot more crossover now though in terms of like adult that feels almost more like YA um, and vice versa like I made an entire video about um, adult books for YA readers I think that's what I called it like forever ago um, because I think that there is a lot more crossover now like for example Victoria Schwab's um, A Darker Shade of Magic series which is a high fantasy adult series but it gets labeled as YA all the time because so many people who read YA fantasy also read that series and because of a lot of the themes that the story covers like the characters are almost YA age but they're a little bit older they're like I think the youngest one's maybe 19 and they're like 19 to like 23 ish so you know it's like slightly older but not like too much older so you kind of feel like you're in that middle area like that gray area so there are definitely I feel like a lot more books nowadays that are kind of heading towards that um, and I definitely feel it. And I've noticed myself for sure that those tend to be some of my favorite books, especially my favorite adult books. Um, so yeah, I think we're getting some more of that crossover. I find yeah. it so interesting that that would be considered adult and not new adult. If they're in that kind of transition area, they're between like 18 and 30. But yeah, I think of the stigma. Around I think it's adult? just because new adult is mostly just labeled as romance right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, new adult, so like, it yeah, I can't think of any like exist. new adult. Yeah, I feel like I can't really think of any new adult that isn't romance. Like maybe yeah. Avatar, but like it is romance. It's romance. just <laughs> fantasy romance, you know? Yeah. So like it exists, but I feel like until bookstores recognize that it exists, like I don't know about Amazon because I don't shop there because I don't work there. So I don't get an employee discount, but I don't know if they have like, do they have new adult as a category? I don't know. I don't look at categories on Amazon, if I'm being honest, but yeah, um, I don't I know. I just feel like until stores recognize it, like where you're buying books, they recognize new adult. This is a genre on its own. It doesn't like no one outside of the book sphere on the internet. Not many people are going to know what new adult is. They aren't going to know what you're talking about. Even yeah. young adult every store like i think barnes and noble does it as well it's the teen section yeah. it's oh, yeah. not young adult it's teen so yeah. it's like shouldn't new adult be young adult but like mm -hmm. age is so funny age is a construct <laughs> it's not but well, okay jacob black <laughs> speaking Amazing. of that one of our first questions you like that nice segue yeah um, there we, we go have some questions from all of you we ask questions on instagram and twitter also if you're watching right now let us know in the chat if you have any questions but our first question is from instagram at bookmarked club on instagram and twitter if you want to follow below. us we're great <laughs> sometimes okay so crazy book nerd girl asks um what was the first ya book you read and Oh yeah, what was the first YA book you read that you know was YA? I think it was Twilight for me. Twilight, yeah. I think what mine was you? already there, God, it's me, Margaret, but that's more considered middle grade now. Oh, interesting. But like, I there's so many books that if you Google, a lot of places will consider it young adult, but if you go to the store, it's shelved as middle grade. That's why it's so confusing. Mm -hmm. So oh, yeah. I'm just going with age range. Like she's 13. So mm -hmm. I feel like that technically would fit into the young adult age range. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I think that was my first one. And I was like young and I was like, can I read this book? And my sister was like, she shouldn't read it to my mom because it's all about periods. And I was I was probably like eight or something. I don't know. I was very oh, young. You can't know about periods at But eight. I read it. And then I was like, I was fascinated by the entire thing. It was amazing. So that was my first intro. And I feel like that's probably a lot of other people's first intros to mm -hmm. YA as well. And like YA that actually is about being like growing up in that kind of transition, like you said, Hannah, because that's really the main focus of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think one of the other ones that were my first delve into that was um, the Click series, which also can be considered middle grade. It's so confusing, but they also talked about like periods. I mean, it was a very like junior gossip girl. That's basically what it was. Uh, I just, I was in a I was in a funk in middle school. <laughs> I thought it was so cool. I wanted to be basically in Gossip Girl, but now that I look back, it's just, wow, goodness gracious. Did it teach me anything about growing up? I don't know, but it's good to have somebody to look up to. I'm not sure if these people would still be my role models, 
maybe <laughs> I mean Bella Swan. I want to grow up fair, with you. Yeah, to be fair, my role model was Bella Swan and Edward Cullen. So like your role model was Edward. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> Amazing. I do um, want to be very cold and pale. Wait, I already am. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. But oh no, like for me, the one that I remember, like being like labeled as YA, like I went into mm -hmm. the teen section of Borders to buy this book was <laughs> RIP. Um, <laughs> um, it was Twilight and Twilight. I mean, we can have like an entire live show on Twilight and its influence, to be honest. Um, but it changed absolutely everything for me. For like sure. I read every other book because I read that book. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh wait, no. My first one was the Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants. Mm. I it wasn't considered young adult, I don't think, but I read it in like fifth grade, and I was like obsessed because it was about like summer romance. Have not changed since fifth grade. <laughs> but I again, it was about like those. death, and it was about like very hard hitting issues that I. It was one of the first books that I cried while reading. Amazing. Mm -hmm. I read a lot of those like summer romances. Um, I think the author was Haley Abbott and I picked it up because it was Haley and I was like, that's me. So I picked it up and I distinctly remember this book was a teen book. I was young, young, young. And it was like, there were sex scenes in it or like, you know how it's like, and then it fades to black, you know? So yeah. it was told in like three perspectives or something. And I would just skip to the ones that had the sex scenes because I was so curious. I was like 12. I was like, what are these people doing? What is happening? So like I read the books, but I didn't really read the books because I just skipped to where all the fun stuff was happening. You read the important parts of the book. I did. <laughs> I just wanted to know what was happening, okay? I was so young. So I was like, this is amazing. But I also read, um, I think it was Confessions of a Hollywood Starlet or something like that. I basically order books from the Scholastic Book Order. And that was probably my first intro to why I was anything oh, yeah. I got in the Scholastic Book Order. Mm -hmm. I remember Twilight. In middle school, Twilight was at the Scholastic Book Fair. And everybody was, like, freaking out. Like, oh, my gosh, it's the best book ever at the Scholastic Book Fair. Next to, like, the really long, noodly erasers that didn't work. Amazing. I miss those things. Did they ever oh, work God. for you? No. No. Oh, yeah, they just were nice them. to have. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have another question um here's one from trisha pratt on twitter what are some of the popular ya trends from the past that you missed and which trends would you like to come back so which trends from the past do you want again i would like i want vampires i was about to say that yeah i want vampires <laughs> so badly and i want them done really well and mm -hmm. i miss them honestly I could do without vampires versus werewolves again. Like that's yeah. a little bit played out, mm -hmm. but I'll take vampires on their own. Like I want a new series about vampires that's just like super intense and gets like super popular and has like a huge readership so that we can all freak out about vampires again. I miss it. <laughs> well, you and I are both going to read it. Yeah. Uh, but I did, after you read Twilight, did you read any other vampire books? Oh yeah. No, not other vampire books. I tried to read... Was it called The House of Night? Yes, I loved those. Wow. So See, I tried to read the first heard. book and I was like, it's not Twilight. Um, no, but I, I did that have... and then I read like 10 of them. Oh, see, I had I had a whole phase after Twilight where I just read all of those like Twilight wannabe books. Um, like not that the content of the books were necessarily even trying to be Twilight, but like the covers were trying to like yeah. imitate Twilight. Uh, so like Hush Hush, Fallen. Um, Fallen Angel stuff, I guess. That's what I was into. Mm -hmm. uh, paranormal, I guess. Um, what else was there after Twilight? I re I vividly remember Hush Hush and Fallen. Those were like, I loved those. Well, I didn't like Fallen, but I loved Hush Hush. You didn't read Vampire Academy, right? I didn't, no. I loved that. I yeah, loved as much as I love vampires, I didn't, I never read those. I you missed those. out, man. Excuse me? Can you I mean, I read it, that? <laughs> I read it like two years ago or something, so... I was like, ooh. Well, now it's potentially it being adapted anymore. again, right? So, I know, like, I saw that. I may it actually my thing. Them. Did, you, did you, not you not see know? that it was all over Twitter? Oh my gosh, I, I escaped Twitter apparently for the day. But no, the um, spinoff series was better. But did you read the parody of Twilight where it was called Sporks Washington? No, but have you read <laughs> Nightlight, the parody of Twilight? Because <laughs> I read I that. all of these. Like Hunger <laughs> Pains. Who was the person who wrote these parodies? Oh my gosh. I feel like 
that's the thing though like what you were saying how you read twilight and then you were like i need everything that's like twilight and i did the same thing and i don't think that happens in any other age category really Mm -hmm. middle grade yes but specifically it happens a lot in ya because there's such like a fan culture surrounding these books like you have people creating fan art you have people writing fan fiction surrounding books and you have the rise of these certain genres like dystopian was the last one that we saw and i feel like fantasy is kind of the new one right now um Very so fantasies. yes like, yes sexy uh, so at one point it becomes oversaturated and then kind of move on to the next thing because we saw like vampires and paranormal and all of that had a boom and then Mm -hmm. it moves on and then it moves on so i'm interested to see like what it will be next but i think it makes it such an interesting age category Mm -hmm. the fact that it's so trend-based and there's such like a fandom because i've never seen that with other than fantasies adult books I just mm-hmm. feel like you don't see it as much. Other than like romances, like cowboy romances are That's really popular. True. <laughs> like That's a lot of very weird, true. obscure, like but, I love this, like this biker with like a dog. Like that that's a oh, yeah. genre. <laughs> yep. Yep. Literally, I would have you wouldn't even believe the things that I got asked for all the time. Uh someone asked for their sexy mama books, and I was like, Yep. Yeah, well, my shift is done today. Goodbye. Um, which like it's totally fine if you read that. <laughs> it's just like amazing. Um, but I feel like with romance, they don't go away. So mm-hmm. they have mm-hmm. like the categories, but they never get over it. Like if you love like this one woman was like, I can't explain why, but I love these biker romances. And I was like, you do you girl like you read those vroom vroom. <laughs> you go. Like, get your engine get going. It. You go hog wild. Do you see what I did there? Hog wild. Get oh it. my gosh. Hog well, a lot of people hog are hog commenting hog. what is currently popular. So, Lost Girl of Neverland says, I feel like Mermaid and the Sea was last year's trend. So, like, pirates, That's mermaids. True. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, Bells Duarte says, right now I feel like superheroes is a trend. So, we have like arch enemies and we have. Vicious by V. Schwab. Um, that's not as popular, but I think it's getting up there. Mm-hmm. Um, something that I feel like has lasted a long time is elemental magic. I think that's just yeah, like yeah. a staple of fantasy. I don't think it's going away. No. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Oh my gosh, people are saying a lot of room rooms. <laughs> room room. <laughs> oh, fairy tale retellings were very popular for a while. Oh yeah. Dorothy right. Must Die and the Lunar Chronicles, all of that. But now it's the fae. The sexy fae specifically. We don't want any <laughs> non-sexy <laughs> people here. <laughs> Apparently. <Let's be> <laughs> um so Haley, what's a trend that you want to come back? So both of us want vampires badly i don't I want know. evil vampires i want like actually like not like we're vegetarians but what no i want no i want like, evil vampires i want like people. real vampires yes oh my god um i honestly don't know what i would want to see come back i have no clue that's okay. i didn't we'll because i didn't read it that much so like <laughs> I don't have anything. It's I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> You're welcome for that intelligence. I <laughs> so from Cora, Galactic Reader on Twitter, what was your favorite era of YA? Oh, Did the you Twilight like- era. Okay. Because, yeah. okay, <laughs> no, okay, I'm sorry I keep bringing Twilight up. And you guys know I don't Twilight- actually like... Twilight is literally, I just said Twilight. Twilight. (laughs) I love Twilight. (laughs) It changed everything, though. It was such a pivotal moment because it introduced so many people to the genre. So you keep on talking about Twilight. (laughs) Well, I mean, like, like, the thing is, like, now I don't really like it anymore. And it's very weird to me because I was literally just having this conversation with someone the other day. Like, I don't think I have ever loved anything as much as I loved Twilight. Like, I don't think I've ever loved a person as much as my 13 year old self loved Twilight. We did. <laughs> we mean nothing. No, but like, if you think about it, like when you're like 12, 13, like you're going through puberty, you're like feeling pretty much the most amount of emotion that you ever will feel in your entire life all at once. And when you find something like Twilight at that time, like I, I was so obsessed and I don't think I've ever felt that obsessed with anything else in my life. And 
I was just thinking about like how intense it was. And oh, yes. that's why I miss. Oh, yes. Yeah. Like my retainer to this day still says Twilight <laughs> on it. Like that's that was my 13 year old version of getting a tattoo. Like, thank God I wasn't like 18 by the time I was obsessed with it because I would have Twilight like written straight across my back or something. Oh, my um, but but like I I I miss that time so much mm -hmm. because I have not felt that like dedicated about any series or book like even a tv show or anything ever since twilight and i want like another series that will make me feel like that obviously there are so many i love like i love them with all of my heart now but like that was just such an intense phenomenon. passion yeah, truly a phenomenon mm -hmm. um but like such an intense passion and i miss that era like it was just a fun era like it had its issues do not get me wrong People but like it was underwear at them like <laughs> yeah i remember that but it was it was fun like there was so much community i feel like yes and i i feel like there hasn't been a series that's been that big since twilight yeah. you know what i mean no. like the they hunger games was really Potter. big that well yeah but that was, was like different 10 years yeah. yeah that was different like it started before mm -hmm. um and I feel like the Hunger Games was the only other one that came close. Um, but like since then, there hasn't been like a single series where like that many people feel that dedicated about it. There's been like hints at it. Like when mm. Divergent first came out, that was a hint yeah. at it. But then obviously the last movie never came out. So we know how that all ended. But yeah, Twilight, like my lunch discussions in middle school about Twilight, we like actually got oh, yeah. heated discussions like they're yelling debates People left to like cry in the bathroom because of our debates oh over i had like honestly four posters around my room i had the shirt that said and so no oh my gosh what was the shirt like you're you're mine now or you belong to me or like what was it it was like the really possessive phrase <laughs> Which one? <laughs> I know, it's not, it's not, it wasn't and so the lion falls in love with the lamb. It's like you're all I have or something like that. I don't remember. But it was um I got it at Hot Topic. I got so much at Hot Topic. But there was a whole YouTube community surrounding Twilight that made yeah. like different oh goodness. How are they doing now? How's the YouTube Twilight community doing now? I, I hope know. they're well. <laughs> I hope they're well, too. I wish them the very best. Also, Hannah, can you get Hold On Tight Spider Monkey tattooed on your back? Um, I think yeah, of knuckle, course. Knuckle oh. tattoos. Yeah, knuckle tattoos, for sure. But you're on your back. Okay. Why not both? Perfect. Perfect. Get, like, Twihard on no, your... No, my monkey knuckle. man, and then hold oh on tight God. spider monkey on the back. Oh, my God. No, like, <gasps> the obsession ran so deep. Like, to this day, I think I can still quote the the quote on the back of twilight like verbatim because like i have it memorized like i was so obsessed it was mm -hmm. unbelievable yeah. oh my literary musings told me you are my life now that's what oh, it was right, it right. was on my shirt it was <gasps> said, you are my life now <laughs> what i mean it was past, true that's though. me at the book uh, oh my god goodness but i also really did love the dystopian era the dystopian era was great, but I feel like it died out very quickly because mm -hmm. they all became the same. It was all the, the same framework. Yeah, that the was difference? late high school for that was like high school for me though. So like I felt like yeah, it lasted same. a long time, but also like in my mind, a year was like twenty years. So <laughs> I feel like the difference between the Twilight Paranormal era and the uh, dystopian era was that like there were obviously there were a lot of Twilight copycats. Um, but I feel like there, it wasn't like oversaturated. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like with dystopian, there were just so many mm -hmm. dystopian books that were literally variations of the exact same thing. And I, I couldn't take it anymore. Yeah. Like I love the hunger games. I will always like the hunger games. Um, but like after that, it was divergent didn't like divergent i loved the first divergent book so i but was I, a fan <laughs> i, I and then it too. was like delirium and matched and shatter me was oh, later but um what else was there there were like oh the ugly series that came out um, way before though yeah 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 but like it was like all of those were like still like basically all the same thing yeah. <laughs> um yeah. and it, it was just so much so quickly that like it it fizzled oh. very fast. So. Ever Like Forever says um, that it was boring because it was all US based. And I very much True. agree with that. Mm -hmm. I think it was all basically like 
this is what happens after the U.S. government collapses. And then that's also why they were so similar to one another. Because it was all like, yeah. this is what California is doing now. Like the Legend yeah. series. That, that By the time I read Legend, that's when all of my love for dystopian had fizzled out. Yeah. Yeah. There's a new b- Legend book coming out, eh? Are you serious? Really? Mm-hmm. It's coming Bring out this fall, I think. I never read any of them, but. I did. I enjoyed them, but I don't know if I would now. But I don't know. Um, the Ugliest was probably one of my first YA books, actually, now that I think about it. Yeah, and I, I love still that enjoy that one. Yeah. Because it's so different. Oh, there's yeah, not really yeah. there's not much else like it. And it gets to the core of a lot of issues that you're having as a teenager with like self-esteem and all that stuff in an in interesting way. So I think those are great, but I definitely totally agree. Like dystopian just came in so hard and so fast and it was just Mm -hmm. like please it was immediate oh yeah yeah no because it was like it was literally like the hunger games and then here's 20 (laughs) other book series that are all about exactly the same thing with different characters um and yeah it was a lot i mean don't get me wrong i loved them like i loved Mm -hmm. reading them i loved delirium i loved matched i loved like all of them um but yeah it, it was just so much all at once and it was a lot it was interesting to see what different authors did with like basically the same premise, mm-hmm. premise, like how they slightly altered it. But again, very similar. But um, also you could tell like who was really influenced by like Divergent with like yes. whose like who's, um, books came out four years after everybody else's. Yes. <laughs> yep. It was like what, still, a, still a dystopian, but now they've fizzled out. Um, yeah. We have another question from Abs. Bailey on Twitter do you think YA is unfairly judged more now than it was in the past and I think no yeah I I don't think so it has a lot of critical acclaim nowadays we have the New York Times bestseller list completely dedicated to young adult um fiction we have like Angie Thomas who has completely changed the game nowadays they're teaching young adult books in school I I even took a young adult literature class in college like it was an entire class dedicated to YA novels and so I really think that there's definitely more respect Twilight really like took a blow it it really made um, everybody look at teenagers in a much crueler light for a little bit but I think now that they're based on topics that are much more relevant to today's society like the hate you give and they're really like hard-hitting issues it's much much more of an intellectual like age category now it's not simply like considered like pleasure reading but I think it's definitely thought of more fairly nowadays but what do you think how have you seen people react to YA nowadays I feel like it's always going to be, like, the thing is, it's like any other age category. There's good books and there's bad books. But unfortunately for YA, the bad books get more attention. And I think that, I think it gets more respect now, for sure. But I think that you'll always have the people who turn their nose up. And that's just the way that it's going to be. But I think that it has learned to hold its own because... There's a lot more substance to young adult reads now. You have a lot more powerful and poignant stories out there. Not that there's anything wrong with the stuff that isn't that substantial, but you have a lot more stories like The Hate You Give that are going out there and changing the minds of people who really need their minds changed and sharing a very, very important message. Yeah, I fully agree. I think that because these stories are now getting told, um, the entire category is viewed very differently. Um, and I think that's a great thing. I think we have a long way to go still, but um, I think that it's moving in a more positive direction. Yeah. I think that um, a question that we got asked by quite a few people was um, where we want to see young adult go. I can't find a specific example right now, but um I would like to see, so we've made strides with diversity, but we still have very, very, very far to go. So I would like to see that trend continue because it's not not a trend. I would like to see these own voices authors get their platform that they deserve. And I would like that to become way more commonplace than it is now. It is, like I said, getting to be, but there's still a long ways to go. 
It was from Tom at TJ Reads the Stars. Thank you. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> but I very much agree. I think um, I would like to see people experiment more with different genres because a lot of people are just getting in I mean they're getting inspired by their favorite books and they're like how can I make this fit more to my own taste so that's why you see a lot of people jump on the bandwagon a lot of people are influenced by their favorite books but a lot of other people are just like oh this is making money right now so I'm also going to write a book in the genre but I would love to see there be more experimentation with different genres I would love to see contemporary books without romance in them I think that I mean I personally love romance but even I sometimes I'm like what about people just like getting to know themselves Mm -hmm. so more representation as far as obviously like cultures um more non-US based books I would like to see um published by US um publishers I would like to see more more college books. I would like to see new adult really become it's actually the actually the thing it was meant to be. And I would like there to be more books catered to younger young adult readers because even I I would read a book about oh I just knocked something over. But I would read a book about like a 14 year old and like them going into high school for the first time. That would be really interesting. And I don't know why only like 17 year olds who like don't go to school are the ones represented. Mm -hmm. I definitely, I mean, I see it in a lot of the YA books that I do read and a lot of my favorite ones, obviously. Um, But I want to see everything you guys already mentioned as well, but I really want to see a lot more um, discussion around uh, like social issues in fantasy books, like in YA fantasy yeah. books, that's one of my absolute favorite things. Yeah. When a YA fantasy book will talk about a social issue in that takes that takes place in our world, but put it in the context yeah. of this fantasy world and then discuss that subject. Like for example, Six of Crows does that beautifully, like absolutely beautifully. One of the best YA books that talks about like human trafficking, uh, poverty, uh, yeah, oppression in in such an intricate way, but it's not like it's preaching something at you. It's just giving you a discussion on this topic and it's so well done. And Ember in the Ashes does it beautifully as well. And I wanna see more of that in a lot of um, YA fantasy books. I think it's something that a lot of readers can benefit from, especially young readers. And that's something that really excites me whenever I see it in a book, because I don't know, I just think like, to bring up Twilight again, like I grew up reading Twilight as a (laughs) fantasy book and it's like different, Um, but I read Twilight as a fantasy book because that book's not trying to make any sort of commentary, like, you know, but, um, (laughs) but like when I, (laughs) when I read something, I grew up reading that and I think about like, if I had grown up like at 12, 13, reading Six of Crows, like getting the messages from Six of Crows that I now, when I was like 19 or something, 20, when I first read that book, um, if I'd gotten those messages when I was a teenager, I I would have loved it. I would be different. Yeah. Um, and that's why I think I wanna see more of that, more of those types of discussions, not just in fantasy, even in contemporaries, but I really love it in fantasy. Yeah, I'm just thinking with like Lord of Shadows, how that handles like government and like um, yeah, like that's like let's take that. The book. That's like a really good example because if you take like City of Bones, so I read City of Bones when I was 12 or 13, right after Twilight. If you take City of Bones and compare. everything that City of Bones talks about and compare it to Lord of Shadows, and see like the difference within one series within the same author's work, that's a huge difference. Like that alone shows you. The evolution of YA for in a sure. lot of ways in terms of the subject matter and the age range of the characters and how much it's really changed. And I think it's beautiful. And yeah. also what um, more fantasy authors are doing is showing like um, mental health representation, mental illness representation, like even in like Lord of Shadows, just like having because in the past they have been these like very like white like very very straight very like neurotypical people in a fantasy world and that's the entire world because they're saying oh it's my own fantasy world like it doesn't need to represent the world at large but 
people want to see themselves in fantasy works. And that's why I would, I love seeing like, even in the Hunger Games with Katniss dealing with PTSD, that was the first, one of the first times that I saw. Also being deaf in one ear that yes. everyone seems to like pretend didn't happen. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And just, and like being disabled and having like mental illness, um, even though it wasn't really touched on, now we can see that it's becoming so much more prevalent and that's, uh yeah like um there's more like there's autism rep in yeah Lord of this Shadows. book um this really? book the main character has cerebral palsy oh cool it's yeah, just i love this i would love for everyone to be able to have the experience of reading a book where they see themselves represented that's honestly my hope for the genre mm -hmm. oh and yeah, yeah a lot i would like to see more main characters having more um diversity because they've yeah. been a lot of side characters throughout the ages of being like the gay best friend or something like that but i do love that nowadays at least it's slowly occurring but in the future watch out everybody yeah it's gonna be great <laughs> um i think we have time for a game now did you want to do the game yes please okay so we have a game to play. So if you look in the description of this video, there is a link at the top that says game time. It will lead you to a Google Doc. So we are going to play a game where we try and figure out when these books were published. So you're basically going to guess when these 15 books were published. Don't Google it because that's not fun for, I mean, you can Google it if you want to, but I don't know how that would be fun for anyone, but I'll give you guys a second to get on the dock. Wow, look at that number climb. This is fascinating to me. <laughs> All you the people so on the too. You're like, hello everybody, would you like to play a game? Would you like to play a game? <laughs> What's that thing with the like, I don't know, I don't watch scary movies because my life is terrifying <laughs> enough without them. But that thing with like, is it from Saw? I don't know, but. I watched wow. Saw in middle school. Don't do that. Okay. All you middle schoolers out there, don't watch Saw. Because, like, I'm already a paranoid person, but I like to make myself scared just to, like, feel Life. the rush of death. Amazing. But, you know, <laughs> don't right. do that. Okay. Right. So, uh, yeah. So, I have the answers here. So, you're all going to guess. So, our first book is Twilight. What year do we think Twilight was published? You don't have to say, like, the date but okay, what like year January 27th <laughs> <laughs> what year um, do we think that Twilight was published okay I know that she had a I had a bookmark with Twilight on it and they're like oh like Stephanie Meyer first like like dreamed of these characters like in 2005 but I'm not sure if it was published in 2005 or that's when she had the dream mm. something with 2005 was what it 2006 Hannah I know the date. I know the like exact date of it. Yes. Oh, an icon. What is it? Okay, October fifth, two thousand five. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah. I love Amazing. Two thousand eight oh is when the movie came out. Oh. Oh, I knew that. I knew that because I was in seventh grade. Mm -hmm. Interesting. That's so when I first read it too. Two thousand eight. So. Me too. <laughs> Late to the party. <laughs> now I should have read it in third grade. <laughs> Next is Divergent. When do we think that Divergent came out? I think I know. 2010? I think it's 11. This. I think it's 2011. Are those your final answers? Has yeah. everyone said when they think Divergent comes out in the chat? Oh yeah, I want to see what other people it. Someone put uh, 2,911. I think they meant to put 2,000. <laughs> also, there is a delay. So some people were still answering for Twilight. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, well, okay, people are saying, like, what is it? 2011? 2011. Yeah. I'm always guessing early. At least for Twilight, I knew it was 2005. <laughs> Twilight, I know because I was crazy obsessed. But I used to, I used to be really obsessed with like just figuring out when books were published like back oh, in the borders <laughs> Board, yeah. no in the borders days i would just like go and look at the publication date all the time Amazing. because i really liked writing bibliographies so like <laughs> i like i liked going to that page and finding the publication date and like sitting MLA in a format i was really boring when i was in um did you do like mla for fun yes wow. yes i this is why we're friends uh-huh <laughs> Okay, okay, City of Next Bones. City of Bones. When do we think City of Bones? I don't know popular? when anything came out. 2009? I think it was also 2005. That early? Yeah. I guess so many books have come out since then. I think. Or it might be. It's not. Wait, it's not 2000. 
It might have been 2008. Final answer. What? 2007. Final wait, answer. wait. Ah, <laughs> I'm hold gonna on. Keep on changing it. I'm going to be so mad if I get this wrong. Okay. I think it was 2007. Okay. That's, that's going to be my answer. I'm busy reading as well as other people got it right. It was 2007. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Never listen to my first answer. It's always when I second guess myself that I'm right. <laughs> Next is Angus thongs and full frontal snogging. I have no idea. Ninety-eight. I've never read this. I love this series. Also, I haven't read, read it either. But... Have you watched them? What? I, I love haven't read it so much. This is I like think my sister liked them. Have you seen the movie? No. No. Oh, are you serious? Oh my god! <laughs> I think it's on Netflix right now. I love this movie so much. I made my dad watch it. He even liked it. I mean, he also likes rom coms. Because I forced him to watch them over the years. So he's begrudgingly started to like them. But it's so good. I love this series. Was it 1998? 1990 something? What's your answer, Hannah? Uh, I don't know. 2000. Not at all. Okay. So it was 1999. Dang it! You were close. You were close. Close enough. Uh, next is the click. First book. First book. Again, have no series. idea. To never read them. I don't even know what they look like. Um, they're like Burberry print. I never very... read them either. They're but Burberry. I, why did I read all the bad ones? I, no, well, I just and... I didn't read a lot then. I just remember seeing um, them on my sister's bookshelf. I remember seeing them at Borders, read. but like I never actually looked at them, so I don't really know what they look like. Yeah, I read them all the summer between like sixth and seventh grade. This one's and I, I own, I I own the movie. It was produced by Tyra Banks. I love it. Of you love I this love. fun fact. <laughs> yeah. Okay. When um, do you think it came out, Zoe? I'm just gonna keep on saying 2005. No, 2004. Ding, ding, ding! It was 2004. Yes, because uh, I knew they were all like a lot of them were out before I read them. I like to wear a lot of like lip gloss because the main character Massey Block also wore a lot of lip gloss. <laughs> My role models back in the day were great. I love it. The kids uh, these days have more of a chance than I do. <laughs> do they? Uh, next is The Catcher in the Rye, which is like one of those things that kind of bridges the gap, but it is one of the first books that had a young adult protagonist. So when do we think that came out? I honestly don't know. I've never read it. I, knew I it read it. Back in the day. I read it and like I should know and I want to say like 1942 but that might be so <laughs> no, wrong. No, that was the other book. That was the bad summer contemporary, contemporary one. Oh, 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 that's what I'm thinking of. Was it like 1970? No, I think it's 1980. 1980 something maybe. I have no idea. 1970, I don't know. Okay, Jenna Brown got it right. It's 1951. Are you serious? Mm -hmm. The 50s? Yeah. Do you know why I'm thinking 1980? Because I'm thinking of the movie, what's it called? The oh, Graduate or whatever. Uh, oh, you know what I'm talking about? Oh, that's why. I didn't know it came out. 1942 was closer. Yeah, we you should have done that. I know. I, so know I knew it was old. Yeah, it's yeah. old. It's very old. Uh, next is The Perks of Being a Wallflower. 1997. Um, You were committed to that right away. I don't know. <laughs> I thought I needed to be committed once in my life. I think 1990. Me. Okay, so it was 1999. Oh, Why is everything 1999? What was happening that year? I know, 1999. So it was gonna, well, it's the turn of the century, so everyone's like, we're going to die next year, so we got to get yeah, everything out right now. Yeah, Y2K, got to get up on it. Yeah. <laughs> Leave your legacy before everybody dies and forgets you. Next is The Fault in Our Stars. 2012? Ooh. 2000 I think 2012 is when I read it. I don't know if that's when yeah, it came Yeah, no, out. I was I remember I read it in high school. So was it 2011? Was it 2012? It might have been 2012. I'll, I think I'll, it... I'll join you in Okay, let's go with 12. Answer. It was 2012. Yeah. yeah. Uh next is Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants. No idea. I read it in 2006. So it had to come out before that. So 2002? Uh, let's see. I was just waiting to see people in the chat. Have Has you have you guys read this series? Mm -mm. Nope. <gasps> I was obsessed. No. You said 2002, Zoe? Yes. What did Hannah say? 
Hannah didn't say anything. Hannah has no oh, Hannah idea. Sorry, Hannah. Um, I'll, I'll guess. Um, <laughs> I, I know nothing about this series. I just know that the movie had Rory from Gilmore Girls in yeah. it. Also so. had um, America Ferreira. Yes. yes. And, and had Blake Lively. Blake Lively, that's her name. Yeah. I've never seen the movie either. Are you serious? So. I've done both of them. The second one was not good, but the first one, classic. Mm. I'll guess it. based on what the cover looks like, well, from what I remember the cover looking like, it kind of dates it. So I'm going to guess like 2001. You can also look at the Google Doc. No, I know. I know. Oh. I am looking at the Google oh, Doc. Okay. You're like, what I remember. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, from like the series, like what I remember oh, yeah, them yeah. looking like. They were all um, <laughs> Jenna Brown, I think she got one right before, but she got it right again. Uh, and it was 2001. Indeed. <gasps> Dang it. <laughs> Wait, so I was right, too? Right, you were right. You were right. Killing it. Uh, Next is The Giver. Was that the 90s? No, it was before, right? Really? I will give you no indication. I only, I read it in, like, high school. Or was it, like, Um, college? I don't know. I read it pretty recently, so I I never. I read it in grade school. I read it in sixth grade. So which year was it, little bibliography queen? <laughs> I didn't like bibliographies by that time, so. Ah, dang it. They weren't cool <laughs> yet. Mm. Um, um, I have n- 1996? No, uh, seven. I feel like it's not right. I feel like it was written before. 1994? I want you to tell you. A subtle bookish got it right. It was 1993. Oh, you're so close, Zoe. <laughs> so close. Uh, uh, next is Speak. This is hmm. another 90s book. Wait, isn't it? It's 1999. Like, it's, no, no, no. Yeah, 1999. Because it's like its 20th anniversary this year or something. Oh, wow. look at you. No, because I got an email about it. Ah, that's fine. <laughs> oh, I did too. I never responded. <laughs> <laughs> Lost Girl of Neverland got it right, and so did you guys. It was 1999. Yeah. What in doubt? Say 1999. <laughs> yeah, honestly. <laughs> Um, next is The Outsiders. Well, it says 50th anniversary edition. I know it came out in the 60s. So was that 1967? I'm going to say 1968. Uh, Sheila Anvery got it right. 1967. Oh. Did so you think got it right. Sherlock Holmes here? It was also in our Google Doc for today's chapter. So. <laughs> Oh, no. I could have literally <laughs> scrolled up. You could have. Uh, next is Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret. I've never heard of this book. You're I saying. don't understand how you haven't heard of it. Well, now I have because you've yelled at me about it a few I just, times. It's so iconic. So, oh, God. That's a great cover. It really just exudes. Honestly. When do you think it came book. out? Just based on the cover. 1986. What about you, sure, Hannah? I'll guess the same thing. Anything? Perfect. Uh, I don't think anyone's got. Oh, wait, one person did. Ravenclaw S, 1970. Hmm. Really? How mm-hmm. long has Judy Bloom been writing books? A long time. She's an icon. Really? Truly. Oh my gosh. So okay. the last two last should be two. a bit easier. So no. The Hunger no. Games. <laughs> the Hunger Games, I was surprised by the publication date. I'm not going to lie. I was like, wow. Is it 2008? I feel like it was 2005. I knew it because- was earlier. Like, it, it took a while to get popular. Also, um, Suzanne Collins was friends with my history teacher. Did, sorry, this is so off topic. Did you know that Suzanne Collins has another series? A middle yeah, grade middle series? Grade. The Overlander, yeah. right? I didn't yeah. know that. I, I never read it, but a lot of my friends were really into it. Yeah, one of my friends was talking about this um, middle grade series that he had read. We were just, like, talking about random books. And he was like, I wonder who wrote that. And he looked it up, and he was like, Suzanne Collins, like, the Suzanne Collins. And I was like, what is this? Where um, have Suzanne been? I have no I don't know. idea. She's Wait, what not, did I say? 2008? Like, yeah, I said 2008 and 2005. So what was you it? said 2005. Wait, wait. Uh, I said 2005. Is that yeah, what I said? You did. Okay. You did. Uh, Juliana Michelle got it. It's 2008. What? Yeah. Look Why do me. I feel like it came out before that? Believe it. Well, I knew. I knew it came out like that? a few years. Like it took a while to gain up momentum. And then, but I, I like I swear I was going to. Not everything came out in 2005. <laughs> It feels like everything came out in 2005, <laughs> but then I read everything in like 2008. Yeah. 
<laughs> like it came out in the past, like 2005 or yeah. something. Okay. The, the final thief. one is The Book Thief. This one fascinates me. 2008. <laughs> 2006? I don't know. Okay, so uh, Sheila Amvery got it again. 2005. This you one's shut up. 2005. You shut up. <laughs> I knew I it was in 2008 because in 2008 I was reading it in paperback and it mm. was, yeah. I love our deducing. I know, right? So analytical. <laughs> I love it. Wow, all that right. was a fun game. That's all you have. I hope you guys enjoyed the game. I don't know. I yeah. thought it would be fun to do a little game. Um, but want to announce Booktuber of the Week? Oh, okay. yes, I do. Okay, so our booktuber of the week is Alexa from Library of Alexa. Her link is down below in the description box. I love her channel. She is so relaxing. Like, I just feel so calm while watching her videos. They're, I watch them before bed, and she's just, like, so, she's just happy to be there, and I'm happy to be there. So I asked her earlier if she could provide us a little bio to read during the right now. And so... Here's her bio. Okay, so Alexa from Library of Alexa runs a little tiny booktube channel that focuses on diverse adult and YA contemporary, but she likes to, but she sneaks a few sci-fi and smutty titles in there too. <laughs> Wink. Okay. <laughs> she graduated college recently and just got back into reading, so she's still developing her reading tastes. She says that she's proudest of her challenge TBRs. For example, this month she's reading books by authors that are blurbed on her favorite books. I just mm -hmm. watched that video. I thought it was a really interesting concept. Um, but in the past, she's done more bizarre things, like put 2,000, no, 200 of her Goodreads TBR books in a sports bracket and made them go head to head. And she says that she's currently focusing on quality over quantity because she spends the majority of her free time attempting the 100 baby challenge on Sims. Yeah! A lady of our own heart. <laughs> so I please check her out. I think she's really inventive with her videos, and but they're also very relaxed. So mm -hmm. I like to see her TBR videos and just her videos in general. A pleasure to watch. Give her, her a, a watch so happy. if you want. I know it's all yellow. It makes it. It's a ray of sunshine, style. honestly. Yeah. Amazing. All right. So that's going to be all for this week's live. Thank you so much for joining us. Next week, we are going to be on Hannah's channel. We don't know what we're discussing yet, but we will let you know when we do. Don't forget to join our Goodreads page for the book club if you're participating in that. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter and Instagram as well. So thank you guys so, so much for watching. And yeah. Bye. 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 <laughs>